As you can see, the parts box is getting smaller because a lot of these parts are getting installed specifically on the little Z50. I do an update on it tomorrow because it's a little bit uh, late now, but I did finish doing a full top end jug and piston rebuild on the little Z50 because it was low on compression. And although we did get it to run after about five minutes, 10 minutes going around, like once it fully warmed up, it started running terrible. And I thought it was carb issues, but I got some other things to go along with the carb to help fix it. But it was mostly that tire top end, but we got that fixed and uh, I'll probably be showing that right now. You can probably hear it. Right, but here's the C15 now. As you can see, uh, we've gone through over mostly all of it. Um, the only thing that is stock that I have not touched has been the actual transmission itself. But this whole top end is new. We recently just finished putting it on and it's what we were testing. As you can see, I also have the carburetor along with all its little accessories, pieces and pipes. And we recently got front brakes put on, which I'm actually really excited about. And although it does torque steer when you brake to the right, it's still overall really nice to just have both brakes on it. The rear one, of course, still has to be adjusted because the back arm uh, is slipping on its little it's slipping on its little joint piece. So we are gonna have to adjust that to make sure it grabs every time. But here it is. Um, there's obviously some parts that aren't original, like the throttle body, the brakes, uh, and the cutoff switch. But I'm not going for all originality. I just want it to look as best as it can. I'm gonna try to get a seat in for it, and uh, it's honestly looking really good as is. I really like it. The tank is changed, and although we do have like a few bit of dings up here, I actually actually don't think those are dings. It's actually just dirt. Yeah, it's dirt. But yeah, um, here I'll actually start it up for you guys. It's uh, a bit cold, as you can see. Um, it's almost out of gas too, but I think it will start. I'm not really sure what that rattle is, but... Oh. I might know what that rattle is. Seems like something here is kind of touching itself rattling, but... As you can see... It runs like it should. It runs like a beast. Hi, people! Be sure to check it out. Yep. What up? All right, so we're doing the self tappers. Not self tappers. <laughs> we're doing uh, rib nuts to hold in the body kit to the S13. As you can see, we already have primed up. I uh, already made the four holes now. Uh, we sprayed them with a bit of primer so that the holes don't rust out. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the inserts in and with the tool squeeze it and it'll leave a nice threaded surface. So instead of having to blend in the body kit or having to self tap it in, we'll actually be able to remove it and take it off as we please. This way later on, if he does crash or something happens to the side screws, they'll be easily replaceable. Instead of having to remove it or remove self tappers and then create multiple holes for no reason. Uh, as you can see, we put them in and they're a whole lot more flush. It's a whole lot nicer than having self tappers everywhere. And it'll be easier if he wants to swap out body kits or go with a different one later on in the future. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and knock out the rear ones for him and then uh, we'll see what it looks like once it's all mounted up. Now, as you can see, it's on there. It's on there really firmly now, and it's just being held on by the uh, four, these two here. Nicely screwed in, as you can see, we, uh, oh, if it decides to focus, as you can see, we even got the little wash in the back. It's nice of a, it's not exactly flush, but it does make it a lot nicer than just the head of the bolt sticking out. I think it looks amazing, actually. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and knock out the other side, but that looks great. No, with both sides, here's this side on. Here's this side on, although this one fits a little bit uh, thicker on this side and you can see that there's some gap, but that's just because the mold on this side wasn't as perfect as it was for this side, so we do have a a bit of a little gap, but honestly, it doesn't matter. I think the car looks good regardless and, you know, no one ever really gets that close up to just notice something like that, so as long as it looks good, you know, I think it's very passable.
Also, check out the little Z50. I've uh, been taking it out on the lower rides while we just de-stress from working on it. But yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. <laughs> All right, so I got this uh, Tail 110 quad. Have the plastics body and rest of it, and I'll be uh, fixing it up today. As uh, now we're in the tire, so I'll be getting some in. And I took all these covers off because I'm gonna tighten the axle nuts because um, on this side, yeah, see hand tight. Um, but I had a no spark issue. I already solved that with a new spark plug. And I'll, I'm gonna go over the rest, make sure it runs right. Looks like the car might be a little bit clogged and it. it's preventing it from running right. But I'll do a cleaning touch. We'll adjust everything and we'll see from there. But uh, it has a lot of potential. It's a cool thing. It's for my friend. It was for his kids. He got a new. Sat in storage for a while, but now he wants to get into writing it, so I'm gonna get a right for him. I got the little pump going, I'm gonna see if it uh, can get it up, but it seems to be inflating it. Alright, so I just got the tire beaded in, I just had to use some air and force, and you know, my brother here helped me. Uh, I'm gonna put some air in the rest of the tires, take out the carp to clean it, adjust the valves, and then it'll be good. I'll just finish putting the hub together and then back on it. The axles didn't have a cotter pin, so I went ahead and tossed one on all four. Just for that extra safety, make sure the wheels don't fall off while we're riding or anything. Check this out, uh, the slide wasn't going all the way up when I was uh, playing with it earlier. I had noticed that it would only move like 10%-ish or so, so I got, I have it actually moving freely. Tension on it's good, I just adjusted this like uh, throttle screw here. But I went and squeezed the uh, brakes because I wanted to test if the uh, brake lock, I wanted to test if the brake lock here worked, but look, when I pulled it, I noticed you see that? That one moves. This one, right down there, you can see it's rubbing. So what I'm gonna do is reposition this arm because this brake's at this moment not at all working. As you can see, you can hear it trying to go. And I noticed it's weird that only one of the cables flex, but I'm gonna go ahead and get that fixed. It's a whole lot better. You can see actually, lever moves with a little bit more ease and the brake stop works now to release and you're pressing your brakes and you just flip this down and it holds it in case you want to like park it store it which is neat especially if you're working on it like now and you want to release it you just let go but nice yeah as you can see four brakes now all right so i'm just gonna go ahead and move on to the car i already have it off and go ahead and give that thing a wash man the focus on my camera is horrible today i have to drill and remove those damn uh tamper protection screws or whatever but i have some replacement here for it now i'm gonna go ahead and actually be able to clean the carb all the way through now that i can actually get it open plus we'll be able to tune it a lot better all right well i got the car finished all put back together i just gotta put everything back together all right well here it is all done i just have to put the seat back on and i'm gonna give it one last jump start because it's kind of the only way i can get it right now until the battery charges up a little bit i'll put the coleman battery in for the meantime 